Now we've seen this play before. So we go motion in. We saw this last year. This was Justin Jefferson, though. They're going to go. We saw it. We saw this last week. Green Bay rocks their safeties, but they they tip it early. I don't know why they tip it early, but they tip it early. They don't just stay. They don't say square. So you can you can always have an indicator. They've put Rasul now on on uh, outside leverage, and we're gonna have, he's gonna have free access to the secondary. Talking about KJ Osborne here. Now, we're not passing this off. And we're now we're wide open. So the, they did the same thing they did last year. Up top, they're going to go, they're either going to go post or, or uh, run a nine to clear that space out. They're going to bring somebody in the flat to bring down the flat player. And then they're going to put this either as a foot race with Rasul or... If you're going to pass it off, you have to pass off to linebacker. Nobody's home. Easy catch and run. Big plays in the passing game. Two by two. And this is the little stuff you talk about staying on, you know, staying on schedule, staying on the sticks. This is simple. They're going to bring both linebackers. After a big play, what do you do? You bring everybody, okay? What do the Vikings do? They just run a quick stick in the middle of the field. We have a miscommunication between safety and corner. Both going to the flat player. KJ Osborne, after that big play, just turns around, grabs eight more. Easy pitch and catch, right? Just staying on sticks. They go back to their bunch look. Now we're playing off. They're going to use the space of the entire field here, okay? So they've got one across the field. They've got Hawkinson up the middle, and then they use the flat player. Why do they do this? Because when you diverge directions you force the defensive backs to make an immediate decision if they hesitate at all they're wrong this will come up later with our team so you see rasul douglas here has outside leverage on either player but he has really bad outside leverage against the tight end so if they switch this and we see that they do and he's not old he's no longer going to the flat he's driving on the tight end a good quarterback just makes the play, and he's looking around like, what am I supposed to do? Touchdown. This is a real, you know, when I say palms up moment, it's like, I got no answers for you. This is a palms up moment for me. Two by two, you motion over. Okay. <clears throat> Why is this a palms up moment? They walk their safety up on the line of scrimmage. So you have a two outside look, and you're going to run inside zone. But you're, this is the exact same look that they had with McCaffrey last week when he got scored a touchdown. Two man over. You have a safety back. This isn't coverage. It's not the exact same. I'm talking about the way that we're running this play. So right now, you see that we can throw the wheel and have basically a one-on-one -on -one with two blockers. Or if you hand this ball off, because this is an RPO, this is like RPO quarterback. Looks like he has an option to run it, but you don't. Look, because we never do. We never do. You have now two guys, not one guy, but two guys outside of the tackle, which means the defensive end is 100% going to crash and take this ball carry. Like you're not going to get any. This is a play that is designed to fail if you're going to run it like this. You need to be able to check out of this, and you had time. There needs to be a call, a check. You need to be able to run the swing here. You could run the option off the outside player. There's so many things you can do, but this is not the right option because you can't outrun the defensive end who's crashing. It's just an impossible ask. The offensive line could block this perfectly and you'd get zero yards. But so now they run, if they're not a spread out, this is, turns into more of a bunch look, but they end up running a wide receiver screen and Christian Watson just gets manhandled. I think that's by 44. And Dobbs thinks, oh, maybe I should go inside and immediately regrets his decision because he sees all purple. But instead of gaining five, just run and dive for five. You go back outside, get tackled for one. Right? So it's like palms up the first time. But then again, We'd give him a chance here, and instead of getting five, he gets one, runs the wrong direction, not a good block by the receiver. Maybe we couldn't trust him the first play either. Your guys have to make plays. 
it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter. Like every receiver there knows how to block a defensive back on a screen. There's no like, well, I didn't understand the call. Well, I didn't know which direction he was going. Like everybody knows how to do that. This isn't, this isn't one of those things where it's like, ah, it's the playbook. It's not the playbook. Another palms up moment. You got a two by two, tight end tipped off, chipping out. And this is just one of the weirder interceptions that you're going to see. Like, this is a really good play by this kid. I don't know how he did it. If you watch this thing in replay, it's just, it doesn't look like it should happen. Love Aaron Jones here, trying to make plays. Everybody coming down, trying to make plays. But that's tough because it leads to this. After the game, Jerry Alexander had one of the weirder press. I can't tell if Jerry Alexander was like messing with the media with his press conference or he was, you know, it was kind of, it was really weird. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but you should check it out. It was bizarre. Um, but he just says on this play, you know, we were in man coverage and it was a good play call. Well, they have Addison in the backfield. So they use Addison as a running back, knowing that he's going to get a full head of steam. But I'm not circled on Jerry Alexander, who Addison beats for the touchdown. I'm circled on Quay. Not because Quay did anything wrong, but again, big play. What do we do with the big play around the 23rd yard line? Well, they 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 bring linebackers. Okay. So they know this. Minnesota knows this. I know it. So the Minnesota knows it. They bring the linebacker, but he's got no chance. Because look at the anticipation by by Cousins. First of all, this is not a clean dog. Dog is a linebacker blitz. This is not a clean dog because of the, the, the way they gum this up in the middle with the two defensive tackles. So it, it looks like right now he has a free shot. He does not. But look at the anticipation on the throw. Now, if you go back and watch Jair, this is a really tough ask for Jair because he wants to go up and be aggressive. So you watch Jair Alexander. He goes, he takes a step towards him, and it's like, I don't know if you should do that. He's got an eight-yard head start. So you basically have to now turn, make sure you got to either hold the hell out of him or he's going to run right by you. There's just no way. There's no if, ands, or buts about it, right? So great throw and catch. Touchdown, first play after the turnover. I mean, it's just those are momentum swings that are just really, really tough to get over from. Third quarter, trying to put something together. So this throw on the surface, you're like, man, it's a big play. This is fantastic. But here's the difference. Now, we just watched Kirk Cousins' anticipation of a throw. Okay. Now, watch the slot. Talking about the guy where it's the first and 10 little holograph they have on for the, uh, the show. Right now, that ball's gone. That ball's out of his hands right now. He just cleared the linebacker. Ball should be coming in. Why? Because if the ball's coming in now and he catches the ball like right now, now he can make a move on the safety. But he's not ready to throw it. He, he needs to see it open still. And that's maybe the difference of where we're at to where we want to be with, with, with this quarterback is you see he's having to throw his back shoulder so he doesn't lead him into the safety. Why? Because the ball's not out when it needs to be. There was another play. I put it on Twitter. Same thing. They ran the stick, and the stick converts uh, to the outside man running a fade on cover two. Cover two came down and almost made the play. Well, that ball needs to go in the pocket, right, between the flat defender and the cover two safety. You can't throw a lob. That ball needs to be fired in there. As soon as you clear the flat defender, that ball's got to be there. And if it's not, it's going to get picked. We saw it happen in another game on, on – uh, I was watching NFL Red Zone yesterday. It happened on another – I can't remember which game it was. But that happens all the time. You see that happen in high school and college all the time. You have to be ready to throw as soon as they clear. Now, that's a very simple uh, play design that they've run a million times. you got to be better at being able to anticipate that throw. The difference between Kirk Cousins' last throw and this throw is just anticipa anticipation. Both big plays, but there is a difference in the way they were delivered. It matters. Okay, so we're getting there in the screen game, and I'm, I'm trying to be, look, being a little bit funny here. This is a tough game to watch, okay? So the good news is we didn't double team the D tackle, okay? So the D tackle keeps rushing. Great news, okay? So we're getting there. Bad news, center and the right guard both whiff on the linebackers. Double whiff. Goes nowhere. Frustrating. Now, Harrison Phillips, kid from Buffalo, good player. Not a great player, a good player. Today, he was a pro bowler. Why? 
we're asking 89 to block him by himself on the backside. Now, 89, like we can break down how bad his footwork is and everything, but like, let's just say he steps underneath himself. But even if he didn't, which he does, but he has no chance of blocking that guy. I mean, this is silly. And, and, and in my mind, at least as I watch this, I don't know that Yash shouldn't be helping him. I don't know. I don't know why Yash is, 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 uh, piggybacking off of Elton Jenkins instead of helping there. I think he probably made a mistake, but you're going to get your running back hurt here, man. That's a bad deal. We end up scoring on this play. This is a great pick play by uh, for for Dobbs in the in the corner of the end zone. You can get somebody hurt. It's a problem. This is uh, Rashawn Gary doing exactly what TJ Slayton doing exactly what they're supposed to do when they are single covered, right? I'll show this play from the end zone. I think this is Quay who comes up and hits the B-gap really hard, so you end up having single blocks here. Is that Quay? Yep. So Quay ends up hitting the right guard. So they come up, and now you have single blocks. Now, Hawkinson could be helping on one of these guys, but the way that Rashawn Gary and TJ Slayton in particular push their guys directly back, reset the line of scrimmage from a vertical standpoint, Hawkinson has nowhere to insert now. So it's just – and it happened on the last play with Preston Swift that I showed. just turns into a complete disaster. Madison has nowhere to run. This is just really good defense by Slayton, really good defense by, by Rashawn Gary. Big congrats to him uh, on the, the four-year, $107.5 million extension. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but what an absolute unit. He had a – I've showed this picture when he's getting flagged for a, a quarterback roughing the pass. It was an absolute crap call, but big congrats to him, man. It was amazing. Next playoff of that, a flag, though. Another playoff under center play action pass. Do a pretty good job of identifying this, I think, from a pass standpoint. And you see Cousins has somebody right in his face, but he's just on one right now, making some good plays, throwing it with anticipation. Have a good run here. I mean, it's, you know, it's you're kind of 24 to 10. It's the fourth quarter. You're kind of feeling bad. It, this is tough, man. This is really, really tough sledding. They bring everyone third and eight. These are the plays you got to have. Rondre Campbell just misses first down. They end up blocking a field goal here. So we go all the way back down. And this is kind of the crux of the game. You start thinking about you're really only down two touchdowns. There's seven, seven minutes, 52 seconds left. It's first and 10. You can get another first down on the five yard line. I think we get a first down run here. And it's just not physical at the point of attack. It just, you know, it's without, you're in this game. It doesn't feel like it, but you're in this game. And you just got to get physical at the point of attack. So it's first and second, second and five. That's a good, I mean, that's a good game. So now what do we do? This corner's all the way turned around. The problem is, is that Wicks? I mean, where are his hands at? I mean, he's clearly, he's out of control. So Love's throwing this ball, but you just see freeze frame. Like, he's out of control. So, of course, he's going to duff this, you know? You got to be running within yourself, right? You got to stay within your phone booth. You got to have a good center of balance, center of gravity. If your hands are all over the place, that's just showing me that you're not ready to receive the ball. And, again, this is a slant route, you know? You got to make some of these plays for your quarterback. Now we throw the fade. And, listen, I just don't know that – Chris, I don't think this is Christian Watson's strong suit. Like he's a six foot five long strider, and you just watch this release. Like there's not a lot there that is scaring the DB. And then I don't know. I just don't know that this is. It will be in time, maybe, but I don't know that that's the go-to play right now. Now this is we run bunch, fourth and five, and we flood the 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 right side of the field. I don't understand. I just showed you. The uh, the Minnesota Vikings, similar look, similar situation. And they're going to use the entire field so they can drag a defender out here and get a better leverage matchup with that top, top hat guy. So we run Watson across. We run the inside receiver on a, a little, maybe at the, maybe at the sticks in, in cut. And we end up allowing double coverage inside bracket coverage on the main receiver. And it just, the hard part there is 
you kind of wasted your your inside receiver when you can drag somebody away, at least expand them by a step or two so that window's bigger. In other words, if I run the inside receiver on an out, somebody's got to go. So even if even if the outside zone coverage defender steps a, a, half, a step, a step and a half, that opens the window to throw the football for the quarterback. It's not a question of like, we need to switch guys, they make a mistake. It's I either move half a step or a step off, or I hesitate for half a second. Either one of those things creates opportunities for window throws. This does not. Preston Smith appreciation post. Uh, their uh, their their left tackles having a good year. Everyone's there was there's a, a couple uh, publications in the media that I do not appreciate, but uh, they are very happy with his performance as so far. He's a really good player, but Preston gets him because why? Because when Kirk Cousins comes out of the game and Kirk gets rid of the ball really fast, you get sacks. So sack fumble. So we just went four and out. Preston comes in, gets the sack fumble. And now I highlighted Elgin Jenkins here on this play. And I highlighted Elgin for a specific reason. He's the only one single blocking doing his job. Okay. Zach Tom falls over. Renning's got to go help him. Myers and Rasheed Walker or uh, Yash combined for the sack. Everyone says, I'll get rid of Rasheed Walker. Yash was getting beat as well. It's not a problem solved deal. Um, maybe one of them's better in the run game than the other. But this is not a problem solved deal. Again, DJ one of them looked like an all pro yesterday. Okay. Against a number of players. Timing. I'll show this play from a different angle. But he's already asking for help here with the with the referee. But this is this play this play is not going to work because you don't throw the ball fast enough. Now, first things first. You put AJ Dillon on the outside. AJ is not running a fade. So where is Christian Watson inevitably going in this play? Well, the money is going to be he's going to the corner. Okay. Now that's okay. Like you got to run something down here. It's not, this is, you're, they're in dime. I mean, they got four guys, three guys deep and four guys across the middle. Like think, things, this is not an advantageous, they might not be in dime, they might be in nickel, but this is not an advantageous situation for the offense by any means. But the ball's got to be gone now. The ball's got to be in the air now for the end, for the end. You got a safety. So Harrison Smith comes down and tries to take the second, uh, the, the, the third man in. So you actually have the corner open. You get the safety coming over the top, uh, Matias, Matellus, excuse me, coming over the top, trying to chase this down. But you actually have a one-on-one -on -one with number 21 and Watson. But the route he is running, instead of, instead of running to the high angle, and the ball is not out yet, so he's got to now fight for this thing instead of just trying to use his, you know, his speed, put the ball, put the ball to the corner and give him a chance. You try to throw this thing on a rope late, you're just hoping that you get a call. There's a difference. That, that's the difference between a successful play and an unsuccessful play. This play doesn't really have a chance unless you get the call. You put the ball in the corner and put it out early and let him run to it, anything can happen. And then we got the fourth and 16, and he just takes off. Had those rushing stats a little bit, but it's a tough way to end the game. 